I've got some good news. This is a touchscreen Raspberry Pi computer suitable for putting on the wall, a la Star Trek. And it really is super cool. This is the Reterminal from Seed Studio. This has been out for about a year, but this is perfect for me for a project that I have coming up. Let's take a look. All right, I've got some good news. Seed Studio is actually going to work with me on a couple of Better Internet of Things projects that I have coming up. If you haven't seen the Level 1 Better Internet of Things video series, you really should check it out because I've been living with the Internet of Things that I'm literally building for myself and I could not be happier because, well, I actually have a friend that's doing the Internet of Things thing with HomeKit and stuff that they can buy. And so far, I'm ahead of them on both budget and functionality, thanks mainly to Home Assistant, the software, but also the crazy stuff that I've done, like repurposing a, an alarm system, a standard off-the-shelf DSC alarm system with the sensors for occupancy and motion. And you gotta check those series out, it's great. I can control my, my boiler, I've got an Internet of Things boiler, how crazy is that? But also the mini split system, a standard you know, heat pump HVAC system, a lot of really cool stuff. Anyway, the next component of my home automation thing is going to be better control and a closer look at what I'm doing for in-house CO2 management. Yeah, carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide can make you sleepy. Do you know if you work in a small room that's closed off, you know, you're just going at it really hard, the CO2 parts per million can be 1,500, 2,000, 2,500. So initially, for the last couple of years, these, these autopilot you know, CO2 temperature things, these are really cool. If you don't have one of these, this is where you start. Those are like $100 though. They'll give you the CO2 level, relative humidity and temperature. And they can also do data logging. So you can export, with a little bit of work, you can export the, the data via a USB connection and save and graph the data on how much CO2 there is. This works great on like a room scale. You can mount it on a wall, whatever you wanna do. And that works completely standalone. Well, I'm going to build a system that ties in with my HVAC and a heat exchanger and does basically the same thing. Now, this video is not about that. This video is about Seed Studio. There's actually a thread on the Level 1 forum for everybody that's thinking about doing their own Internet of Things thing or thinking about doing a project with Raspberry Pi or thinking about putting together the Lego bricks in order to do this. You see, that's what Seed Studio does. So I've got here a CO2 and temperature sensor. This is the actual sensor, just the sensor that's in there. There's no display or anything else, just the sensor. I've got an interface kit that will let me more easily use this sensor with a Raspberry Pi, and then just some miscellaneous glue hardware to be able to do that. Now, if you're already in the know with the Internet of Things stuff or you're building your own, your own systems or whatever, then you know all about building Wi-Fi sensors with like an ESP32 or repurposing the home alarm systems like I did, reflashing things like the Wi-Fi outlet control boxes with something like Tasmoda. I've done videos on all that. Check out the IoT series. So this is a touchscreen interface that I wanna show you today to get you thinking. You might have some ideas. You can comment on that thread and say, hey, I would love to have a kit for whatever. I'd love to see this or I'd love to see that. Got a couple of things we're gonna look at beyond this. We're gonna look at a router and a, and a home server platform that's based on Intel x86 with a Raspberry Pi built in. But but this is the re-terminal and this has a Raspberry Pi compute module built in, but it, let's take it, let's, let's take a look. All right, so in the box, it comes pre-packed and it comes with a screwdriver so you can more easily take it apart. But this is it. It's a built-in touchscreen, 1280 by 720, four buttons along the bottom, a button across the top, USB-C and micro HDMI, Ethernet and USB on the side, and then we have a Raspberry Pi peripheral compatible header, and we also have a proprietary header. Now, I've already been using this and I've already done some really cool stuff with it. I really like it. I have some criticisms. One is it doesn't have built-in power over Ethernet and it takes a special module for power over Ethernet. So you can either do a weirdo power over Ethernet thing at the side or you can do the backpack which makes it stick off the wall. It's not as cool sticking off the wall thicker, but it does have this heat sink which works really, really well with our Raspberry Pi compute module. And because it is a Raspberry Pi compute module, you can put the eight gig Raspberry Pi in here or whatever you want. And you can also run your own projects on here. Now Home Assistant that I mentioned before, they already have a Home Assistant project for this because this has been out like a year. So a lot of people have already blazed the trail with this and Seed Studio has put a lot of paint by numbers how to's on their website for doing various things. So I can plug in this to Home Assistant as it is 
without really a lot of headache. Now this doesn't run Home Assistant, this just becomes a terminal for Home Assistant. So I could turn this into a smart home thermostat or whatever I wanna do. Now my thermostat that I'm planning to use is actually a Honeywell system that has Z-Wave integration. Unlike Nest, this thermostat talks to the other thermostats in my house and so they'll synchronize and do other really cool stuff like that. But if the internet is down, the thermostat still works. If a firmware update goes bad or whatever, you know, over the air update with Home Assistant, it doesn't brick the thermostats. The thermostats will always work standalone. The thermostats will work standalone even if they can't communicate with other thermostats, assuming that they're connected hardwired to an HVAC system. This is a uh, fail in a not stupid way of doing your thermostats. Whereas if you have a Nest and you've ever experienced a technical issue with the Nest, your, your HVAC it's not gonna work. Remember when the cloud was down and your uh, your nest no no longer worked and you, you couldn't set the, it was like, oh, my house is getting really warm. Uh, yeah. You don't have that kind of problem when you're using Home Assistant to automate your thermostat. You might lose the automation, but the thermostat still works standalone. This is how all Internet of Things things should be built. There should always be a way to interface it and you're just layering on a layer of communication. And that's what I like about ReTerminal is that even though this is Raspberry Pi and Raspberry Pi is not built for five nines of uptime and blah, 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 you know, it's Linux based and something could go wrong. You know, the mi most minor power fluctuation might lead to file system corruption and then you have to do FSEK or reflash it or whatever. It, you just lose a little bit of convenience. It doesn't mean that you can't turn your air conditioner on. And that's what makes this awesome. Plus also being able to SSH into your thermostat touchscreen control for Home Assistant, how cool is that? Now, in addition to that, I've also picked up some other goodies from Seed Studio. I've got a sensor interface, a wireless sensor interface module, and this is some glue logic to connect our CO2 sensor. So this CO2 sensor works just like the CO2 sensor and relative humidity sensor in our autopilot. This does not cost $100, and I can feed the data into something like Home Assistant through my re-terminal, and I can feed that into something like Grafana and graph the data, and also make Home Assistant respond to things based on that data. I can set it up as a sensor in Home Assistant, and then Home Assistant can control whatever is connected to my system. One of the things that you can do with a system like this is set up something to notice if there's particles in the air. There's a lot of dust in your house. You could kick on your HM400, which is an incredible air filter. You should check that out. You can get those on eBay for practically nothing. You can get an activated charcoal filter. You wanna talk about an, a whole house air purifier? That is a very nice whole house air purifier. And I can totally turn it on and off with my Tasmoda flashed outlet control modules. I'll go off on a tangent just for a second about what you do about the CO2 data, because maybe that's interesting. So your sensor is reporting really high CO2 data. What do you do? Well, in California, most newer homes, I think by code in California, you're supposed to have what's called a heat exchanger. But for everybody else, your air conditioner, your heat pump, your relatively recent, as in the last 10 years, heat pump probably supports having a heat exchanger. But I guarantee you almost no HVAC installer has installed it. Uh, comment, you know, you install HVA systems, mini split systems, comment below. My read of the current state of HVAC systems are, Nobody wants to do ductwork anymore because the people that are experts at folding metal have all retired and it's kind of labor intensive and labor is sort of the most expensive thing now. I mean, that was kind of always true, but that's sort of the final nail on the coffin. HVAC installers really like to install mini split systems because you can run a couple of copper lines and put air conditioning anywhere you want. Those are the modules that mount on the wall, like the ones behind me. Those are okay, but those never circulate air beyond outside of a room. Uh, there's another system that uses uh, uh, high pressure air, so you can put you know, a three inch PVC pipe in the wall. And because it's a three inch PVC pipe with really, really high pressure air, it moves a lot of air, it'll circulate air in the room. That's really good for something like CO2. Most HVAC installers don't wanna install that, even though that's not as bad as running ductwork, they still don't want to run PVC pipe or anything like that. So I think that those higher pressure systems are kind of died on the vine. And then your other option, you know, is the mini split system, which is what everybody wants to install. So the mini split system that I had installed in my older house uses ceiling cartridges instead of wall cartridges. And this is really cool for two reasons. One, it puts most of the stuff out of the room. 
so there's not something huge hanging on the wall. You can locate it centrally in the room and you'll get much better air circulation than you would on a side. The units that I have put air out on four sides and suck air in the middle, it is great for circulating air. So it'll mix your nasty CO2 air with regular air, that works really good. It doesn't circulate air outside of itself. However, these systems do have an optional connection to connect to PVC pipe, not for the high pressure, but for the fresh air. And you can route each head on the mini split system to a manifold that'll exchange warm air from the outside. It'll actually take warm air from the outside and cool it down. Uh, it'll allow the air from inside your house to warm up and that process of exchanging air from the outside doesn't actually bring in all of the heat from the outside. It, the thermal mechanics of that means that your heat exchanger really doesn't use a tremendous amount of energy. It does put a little bit more load on your air conditioner, but not very much. A lot of installers will say, oh, we didn't calculate the heat load for putting in the fresh air thing. That's basically a cop out because, I mean, it does, like if you're in California and it's 106 degrees outside, that's not a lie, but that's not exactly accurate either, if you do the math. So anyway, you get your CO2 data, and you basically just turn on or turn off the heat exchanger, optionally with valves that are electric, to say which head in the mini split is gonna get the fresh air. So you can actually direct fresh air from the heat exchanger in your attic or your basement or wherever, to a specific head in your mini split system just based on the PVC connection and the valve connection. Although most of the time people will just send fresh air to all the heads in the mini split system because that's way easier to deal with in terms of PVC piping. And most of these air conditioners already have PVC piping going to them anyway for the drain. So if you're running one PVC pipe for the drain, you might as well run two and get some fresh air. It's really a minuscule amount of work. And if you're an HVAC installer, give me a better reason that you don't hook it up to fresh air other than uh, it would cost $5 more and the, the homeowner doesn't want to pay for that. Now, I'll also mention really quickly, if you're really super into the fresh air thing, you could actually retrofit your home HVAC system with something called a positive pressure system. That is a heat exchanger with an HEPA or an HEGA filter on it that will take air from the outside, do the thermal thing to you know, cool off air from the outside or warm up air from the outside using the, the energy or uh, allowing the energy from your internal air to, to exchange. Um, but also filter the air from outside and then put the fresh, clean, filtered air back into your house. So instead of all the cracks and crannies and, and nooks and crevices in your house allowing wind and air to pass through, the unfiltered dirty air, dusty air from the outside, especially if you're in like Phoenix or somewhere that's really sandy like that, the positive pressure system will filter the air, make it super clean, and then it'll make all of the cracks and nooks and crannies in your house uh, uh, leak that filtered air. It's really hard to do a positive pressure system in older houses because they leak air like a sieve, but any kind of modern construction that's designed for a positive pressure HVAC system, if you have the option, those are really cool. And if you do have the option, you can use these kinds of sensors to monitor the air pressure in your house and outside of your house. And you can say, oh, the air pressure inside my house is slightly, slightly, slightly higher than the air pressure outside of my house, I know the positive pressure system is working. And that's great. I'll tell you the money that I've saved having all the home assistant stuff turned on, because when you're away from the house, it just shuts everything down. All the things that suck power while you're gone, except for the fridge, just turns it off. And it's like, oh, home assistant, I'm on my way home. It's like, great, let me fix the thermal zones. Let me turn the appliances back on. Let me get the lights ready. It's like, you didn't turn off half the stuff you were working on, we just shut everything down. $10, $20, $30 a month here and there, you know, over the course of a year or two, hundreds of dollars and with the energy costs the way that they are. This is really cool. Of course, I've probably spent more automating all that than if I just remember to turn everything off. But I like the automation. I also like being able to turn the lights on. You know, it's like, oh, I've come home and it's dark. And it's like, boop, everything comes on. That's cool. So you can see, get, get in, and fun stuff like that. So I can't tell you how excited I am to be working with Seed Studio. I want to know what sort of IoT, better IoT things you would like to see. Seed Studio may be able to send me the parts, and you can also get $5 off your own IoT projects. Check out that thread and comment at the Level 1 forums. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1, I'm signing out, and you can find me there.